So today we're going to find out if you already have a 5800X, is the upgrade to a 5800X 3D worth it? So obviously it's a no-brainer that the 5800X3D is going to be faster when they're both max overclocked, right? But what about if you have really weak RAM, let's say some 3200 sticks? Will the 5800X max overclock with some good memory beat the 5800X3D with bad memory. So we have three configurations for you today. I'm gonna put up all the IDA benchmarks up on the screen here for you. So we got the 5800X at 53 nanoseconds, 4.7 gigahertz all core. Then we have the 5800X3D stock out of the box, not overclocked at all, with stock 3200C16 memory about 75 nanoseconds. And then we have the max overclock numbers of the previous video with this CPU. What we really want to find out is, depending on what type of gamer you are, is it worth it to actually buy the better memory or just forget the better memory and buy the better CPU and let the cash do all the heavy lifting. So we're gonna include some 1% low numbers here as well, and then we're gonna have a broad range of data for you here today. And then once all the benchmarks are done, I'm gonna show you over to a spreadsheet of what I've created where, and then you'll kind of know, depending on where you are, what the best buy for you is, depending on what your goal is of your PC, whether it be esports, single player games, etc. So. Without further ado, let's go on to the benchmarks and I'll meet you back here in a sec. All right, first up, we got Borderlands 2 and the performance of all three of these is pretty much identical. Not much to see here because this game doesn't care about cash. It only cares really about IPC and clock speed on the single thread. Got a nice little graph here for you guys. Uh, the 5800X3D wins by about 10 FPS in the lows when you actually combine all of them. But um, you'll have the same gaming experience no matter what for these uh, old retro console ports. Civilization 6, we've seen this benchmark a million times before, so we're just going to get right into the results here. Now... The 5800X actually is the fastest in this game, surprisingly. Now, why is that? Is because of all the latency. So if you take the cache out of the equation, locking all the cores at 4.7 gigahertz and having the lowest memory latency actually makes this CPU faster for RTS style games like Civilization VI. Super interesting, right? It's not always about single core and uh, cache. Assetto Corsa up next. Now we see the opposite effect on this game where the 5800X, no matter what you do to it, will not match the cache of the other two benchmarks. Now, the 1% lows are quite similar between the two bottom tier ones, but as soon as you tune the memory, the 5800X3D completely pulls away from both of them. But it's super interesting that... Uh, this game is almost entirely cash bound. So I bet you if AMD actually doubled up on that 3D cache, the FPS between the max tune one and the stock one would be the same. It's just that that max tune one just gets you that little bit extra when the assets actually do have to go out to memory. I think this is by far the most interesting product that AMD has released because it's just, it's so all over the place depending on how you use it. Again, at the end of the day, those CPUs are just tools for different jobs. Pick the right tool for your job. So I got the graph up for you guys. Uh, the more cash, the lower the latency on your memory, the more this game just keeps scaling, which is so cool to see. CSGO, just gonna give you the graph right off the bat here. We've seen this benchmark a million times, but this one is really interesting because it, you can tell that the game kind of scales with cache a little bit and clock speed, right? 
So at the top one actually gets a higher average FPS because that one's a 4.7 gigahertz, right? And the 5800X3D is also at 4.7 gigahertz. So they have the same average, right? Now, if you look at the lows, the cache actually makes it so the other two have higher lows. So it's... It, again, super interesting chip all around here, depending on how you tune it. You can actually kind of see what kind of difference the cache can make, or I should say what cache in general can make for different architectures, because the IPC on these CPUs is exactly the same, right? That's why the averages are the exact same. So all we're seeing here is a difference of the cache itself and what it can do for game engines which makes the prospect of raptor lake really exciting because that's supposed to have a hell of a lot of cash rift breaker up next just straight into the results now with this one again you can also see that it scales with cash and latency on top as well so you can get a benefit in rts games by using both of these technologies so I would say clearly for this game specifically though, cache is more important than memory tuning. The thing I really don't like about chiplet architectures though is look at how high the averages are going up with each step, right? But the 1% lows are just kind of, you know, 10 FPS here and there. Like if this was monolithic, you would see those numbers way closer to each other. That's, the, that's why I don't like chiplets in general. It's almost like a misleading style of CPU. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Let's just jump into the results here and check them out. Now, the results here are actually incredibly interesting because it seems like the memory tuning itself does absolutely nothing in this game in terms of... Uh, look at the stock 5800X3D numbers and look at the maximum tuned ones. So the little bit of FPS boost that you're seeing there is from that, you know, 4% clock speed increase, right? It's not actually from the memory tuning at all, I don't think anyway. But it's like, so whatever the amount of cash there is on the 5800X3D in this game, all of the assets can fit in that cash on this game. So... Yeah, so if, I guess if, so it's going to be super interesting when Zen 4 comes out and it doesn't have 3D cache, it's going to be way slower than this chip in this game. It's going to be really funny for the benchmarks going forward. Warzone is last on the list here, and you can actually see that the, the results, again, very interesting with the chiplets and this game. So you actually have a much higher average and a much higher high on the uh, stock 3D chip, right? But look at those lows. The tuned 5800X has about 50 FPS more in the lows, which is very, very significant. So what you're basically seeing here the textures and assets that can't fit in the cache and then actually have to go out to memory is where that huge frame dip comes from. You're going to get a much more consistent gameplay experience by just having faster memory and a regular 5800X. Now, on the right side, you obviously get the best of both worlds there when you have tuned RAM and you have the cache, right? But... Here's the graph for you. So unfortunately, there is still no CPU currently on the market today that you can just throw onto Warzone and get away without tuning it. Unfortunately, even it was close though. Like I feel like I feel like the 3D cache was really close though. Look at look how high those averages are, right? I I, I bet you if it had twice as much 3D cache, then you wouldn't have needed memory at all, kind of thing, right? I'm sure we'll revisit this when Warzone 2 comes out, but as of as it stands right now, memory, really, really, really well-tuned memory is still more important for Warzone than the actual CPU selection. So the results, oddly enough, are kind of a mixed bag, right? It's not as easy as just buying the better memory or buying the better CPU, right? So it depends on what your goals are. So let's go over to this spreadsheet that I've made here for you guys and kind of go over what I'm talking about here. Okay, so here we have this little kind of pie chart graph 
spreadsheet thing I got going on here. Now, if you have the 5600X or lower, you're on an X370 platform, you're on B450, etc., then you may as well upgrade to the 5800X3D in all circumstances, just because you're going to have a better base platform anyway, right? I mean, even if you're playing Battle Royales and you're on six cores or lower, just getting those two extra cores is more important for the long term than it is buying that memory, right? Uh, reason better base, right? You just want you want a better base platform to work with in the long run. Now, if you have a 5800X or higher, 5900X, 5950X, etc., you upgrade to the 5800X3D if you're playing single player games only. You don't need memory for that. The cache does enough work for you that you can get away with 3200 megahertz RAM. No problem. Now, you upgrade 5800X or higher and you choose better RAM if you are an esports player because of those 1% lows. Consistent delivery of frame rates is far more important than what the counter says in the top left corner. Right. Now, Here's another, here's another option for you. If you have a 5800X or higher, don't do anything. Just enjoy what you have because you're probably getting melted by some kid on a PlayStation anyway. Don't forget, boys, I will leave affiliate links down below to the CPUs and to better memory for you to pick up depending on your scenario. Help the channel out, no cost to you. One more thing I forgot to mention here in the last one. I actually just added this. If you have a 5900X or higher, get the better RAM if you are single PC streaming with lots of overlays, lots of webcams, and you need those really high core count CPUs for that. Now, I haven't tested this. This is more of a, um, I think, type of deal. I will test this in the future, but as of right now, or just do nothing until I test it, but I'm going to go ahead and say that I believe that the better RAM is going to be better for single PC streaming because you still get more cores rather than that 1500X3D. But again, this is speculation on my part right now. I'm just assuming, but I wanted to throw that in there. Well, there you go. The data speaks for itself. Now you guys know exactly what path to FPS works for you. Now, one last thing I'll say on this whole platform, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be adopting the platform today. Like I wouldn't be going out and buying an X570 board and a Ryzen 5800X3D. The 12900K still is a faster CPU with a maximum tune on it, right? But let's say you're on like a 3700X, X370 board. You've already got some Micron sticks. You got some B-Die sticks or whatever. Yeah, then you can just grab this thing, throw it in there, tune it, and you're going to be playing with competitive FPS for many years to come. Many years. Also, keep in mind, if you buy a Z690 platform, you still have one more CPU upgrade cycle coming with the uh, 13th gen Intel. This is the end of life CPU, end of life of that platform. There's no more. You're not... If you buy this, that's it. You, so if you do buy this, you have to make sure that you're okay not upgrading or with the prospect of an upgrade for a long time, right? What about all the people offloading their 5800Xs? You know there's going to be people like that out there for the 5800 3D, right? What if you can get this thing for half the price, right? What if you take those savings and you buy some good memory with it? There's... There's an unlimited amount of options that you have on the AM4 platform right now. What if you get a 5950X for half price? You just don't, like, do you know what I'm saying? There's like, you, you can always be hunting for those deals out there. Don't be afraid to buy a used one too if that's a better deal, right? Anyway, guys, I hope you learned something today. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button, do all that YouTube SEO stuff, like, share, subscribe. Comment down below if you want to see this thing versus a 5950X. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.